Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, we continue with the plant-based experts down under week, and I have two special guests for you today, a doctor and a nurse that are married to each other. Please welcome Dr. Adrian and Jenny Christie. Thank you so much for talking to me. Hi, thank you. Hi. Thank you, AJ. So tell me your story. I mean, first of all, a doctor and a nurse, that's fantastic, but you're both doing plant-based nutrition, so it's even better. Sure. Yeah, it's something great that we can share. It's fantastic. Well, who, who, who got into it first? And how did, tell us your whole food plant-based story. Probably me, I think. Um, over 10 years ago, I had a bone density um, scan and it was revealed it was very low. And I was shocked because... I'd grown up on a dairy farm and consumed lots of milk. So I went on a bit of a journey of discovery and ended up reading the China study. That was one of the pivotal books and was just opened up to this whole world of plant-based nutrition and health a little differently to the way I'd been trained. So I was um, a nurse at the time and shocked at what I'd read about my idea of healthy nutrition wasn't quite what the evidence said. So that was my beginning. And I just consumed every book, every website, every ounce of information I could. And every YouTube video. Yes, and <laughs> that's what I learned about you, Chef AJ. And kept saying to Adrian, you need to know this as a doctor. This is really, really important. So it was probably me pushing you to read the China study that set us both on this path. That is fantastic. Were there any resources at the time in your area for plant, whole food plant-based nutrition? No, I don't think, not in our area. No, it was... No, we, I, I lived on YouTube and um, in America, basically. <laughs> yeah. And it was also really awkward at that time getting oh, even vegan food at cafes here, even for breakfast, baked beans. Oh yeah, oh, they're Boston baked beans with ham. <laughs> I think, oh, beans have got, you know. So anyway, things have changed a bit. And fortunately for me, um, despite the initial protestations, um, Jenny made everything so flavorsome and that's interesting because that's something I really emphasize to my patients. It's not just good. It's you just, there's the flavors. Yeah. And then I was forced to read the China study, which I did and became very angry. Um, mm. Why wasn't I told? Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's, a, that's what I'm sure Dr. Yeah. Campbell would like to hear. You were forced to read the China study. You had yeah. no choice. I've read it again since then. Yeah. Yeah. Off my own back. Yes. First time. Now, yeah. yeah, we have an extensive library of every, just about every plant-based nutrition book I can get my hands on, um, which we now use as a little lending library yeah. for friends, family, and, and, patient, and, and, and patients. patients as well. So this was about 10 years ago? It would be... 2011. I think 2010, so. yeah. Yes, I started transitioning to eating uh, mostly plants probably just a little bit before well, you, mm. but because I'm the cook in the house and Adrian's very grateful to eat whatever is available for him, he transitioned fairly quickly as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, he's a smart man for listening to his wife. Isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Did either of you notice any improvements in your health or appearance or anything with energy when you both went plant-based? Well, it's funny you should say that. Um, um, significant weight loss initially. And I jokingly talk to my patients about, well, when you've lost, when you're this heavy, you go down the, you go through the snoring threshold. And then when your weight drops a bit more, it's the reflux threshold. And then this is the extra energy threshold. Anyway, I went through all of those thresholds and that was really the first thing that hit me. I think oh, I actually feel really good. But I think more importantly, I actually felt I felt happier. Um, and mm. that, of course, then leads to the, um, you know, most of our nerve endings are in our gut, you know. So 
that's where that leads to. And that, of course, then led to another area of exploration with the microbiome and all of, and all of that. Yeah. I think we both said yeah. to each other one day, or asked, do you feel happier since being, you know, eating a whole food plant-based diet? And I thought we, we really noticed that and discussed this with friends as well who said, oh, yes, of course. Like yeah. it was, of course. Of course. But it was really, it was subtle but very noticeable. Mm. Well, that's a great reason for doing it right there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also interesting, my colleagues notice that um, I tend to recover from on-call shifts quite easily. And um, some of my younger colleagues um, joke about it. And, but I've also got a good support team as well. So that helps as well. But no, just the reco recovery is great. Yeah. I, I was thrilled. Um, I all my life suffered from asthma and hay fever and eczema. And when I ate completely a whole food plant-based diet, all disappeared. I have not used a puffer since. I've even had a lung function test that shows my, my lung function is excellent. No more hay fever, no more eczema. So I was thrilled. Yeah. That, that's amazing. You mentioned, Dr. Grissy, why weren't you told? Why aren't more doctors angry? I, I think we believe and trust in the system possibly more than we should. You know, we pride ourselves on um, being scientists. We look at the evidence. Um, the evidence is there, but the evidence is not necessarily obvious. It's not presented to us in a way that, like a lot of the um, pharmaceutical evidence is presented to us. You don't see the broccoli rep coming and talking to you at lunchtime with a freebie plastic broccoli, do you? <laughs> not that you can give away freebies like that anymore in Australia because that's, um, that's known as coercion. I love that, the broccoli rep. That's what I want to be, the kale rep. Yeah. <laughs> the kale rep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. Did, did, at the time when you went plant-based, did, did any of your friends or family members uh, even hear about it or were, was anyone else doing it at the time? Not really. I think we have four sons. Oh, and yes. <laughs> I, think, I think at the time, I mean, they, they would say their mum's always been a bit of a health nut um, ever since they were born. But they, they were a little bit wary and um, or slightly interested. Mm. But now, interestingly, they're pretty much all yeah. plant-based. Two are completely plant-based. Mm. And the other two um, continue to head in that direction and are mostly in that direction. But mm. when we started, there yeah. weren't many people we knew that were completely plant-based. And now, I think most of our, the people we see regularly pretty much are. You get attracted to them in a I way. Think, I think I found a couple of um, people along the way and they're great friends. How old were your sons at the time when you first discovered plant-based nutrition? They were all... Oh, 10 years ago, be 18, 19, 20 and 22. Oh, so they were growing... So you didn't have much control over what they were going to eat? No, right? no, no. No. But they were always happy to eat food um, as students or you know young adults, whatever food there was for free, they were happy with, and they'd enjoy everything. So that was a, yeah. a great way to introduce them. And also, it's partly the way you sell things to to um, students. Um, not that they're poverty stricken students, but a, a big bag of oats is very inexpensive, <laughs> and beans that's very inexpensive compared to meat so they soon realized they would get a lot more carbohydrates protein food um, by eating that way so even if they didn't go completely plant-based on day one they were able like i said they nudged out the more expensive in inverted commas foods mm. Mm. so that's a really good message to send to students all the nutrients nutrient dense money um not poor little you know cheap inexpensive yeah mm. i'm wondering has has anyone in your family because you have all, all sons did they happen to watch the movie game changers of course yes 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 they all enjoyed that 
And one of our sons, this is not from Game Changers, but one of our sons um, deadlifted 180 kilos. Um, there had to be 180 because that's apparently what Hugh Jackman could lift. Wow, that's more in pounds, I believe, isn't it? Oh, um, I don't even, what is that? That is, double it, double it. Wow, 2.2 kilos is a pound. That's a lot. Yeah. Whoa. But, but if Hugh Jackman can do it, so can our Andrew. <laughs> That's amazing. Jenny, I, I read that you grew up on a dairy farm. I wonder if some of your problems like asthma and eczema were related just oh. to the dairy. I, I really suspect that, AJ. Um, I'm, I'm quite sure. And I also I have one of my brothers yeah. was similar, always grew up with asthma. And he's pretty much plant based yeah. and, and um, a cyclist, completely different, no asthma. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, I often think that. And yeah. I know the probably the hay fever and the eczema go along, you know, yeah. that atopic sort of reaction. Mm. He's a scientist. In, it, well, he's a viticulturist. Uh, he's a scientist. And he was looking at Jenny's trial where N equals one <laughs> as, and saw, whoa, what are you doing? And um, he put his foot in the water and yeah. his cycling has taken off even more. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, Jenny, I know you were trained as, a, as a, a coronary care nurse. Do you think if you had this information back then, you might have, things might have been different in the way you, you know, treated patients or talked to patients? I think because um, I've always been interested in the educational side of health and, um, the, you know, the coronary care post, you know, incident program, I think just knowing what I know now to include a little bit more about nutrition would have been really, really helpful. Yeah. yeah. I think I would have been fighting against the standard um, system, but still there's certainly no ever any harm in talking about eating more plants. No one can disagree with that. Even 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, because it, it, in, in coronary care, I think about the time that I had a, a work colleague that was admitted to the emergency room. And while he was in the emergency room, they were waiting for the test. And they said, well, you're either diabetic or you had a heart attack. And while they were waiting, you know, to get the test results, it was dinner time and they brought him dinner and it was beef stew and a piece of white bread with butter and a carton of milk and a piece of apple pie. And I'm thinking, this is what they feed people that maybe just had a heart attack? That's right. At least there were yeah. apples. Mm. <laughs> yeah, apples in the yeah. apple pie, if yeah. there were. But it, it's if there just, were, if yeah, there were, if there were, I I find like, and and I don't know what it's like in your country. It's it's changing in the United States, but at one point you could find a McDonald's in the lobby of children's hospitals. Mm. Yeah. I don't think we've got. Um, it's not quite like that, no. but it's still fast we, foods everywhere. We, wheels are still turning slowly. Yeah. Really slowly. Has, has the way you practice medicine changed, Dr. Gristy, since discovering whole food plant-based nutrition? It has. It, it's actually changed significantly. I'm a, um, in America, you'd call me a family physician um, in a rural area. Um, here we call it the GP. Um, I do the whole gamut of general practice. I used to deliver babies, give anesthetics, and, and so on. Um, as my patients are getting older, um, I'm obviously seeing more and more chronic diseases. I'm challenging patients to not be on medication, to reverse their conditions, because these are concepts that we'd never, I'd never heard of. And I, I find it really, I, I love just meeting people where they're at. Um, some people, particularly if they've had a heart attack, you can put the boot in when they're down and tell them, you might need to, well, you'll need to change things significantly. They're often the ones who change things cold turkey. But for people whose numbers are not very good, but still feel fine, except maybe their belt is a bit tighter and their clothes are a bit tighter, you do sometimes need to go a bit more gently um, or you'll lose them completely. And I, I love just sitting there talking to them about food and what they can eat, and then I run late. But if, <laughs> if a doctor's running fashionably late, it means they must be a good doctor. <laughs> well, that's what I tell myself anyway. That's well, people still come back, so. And it's having a ripple effect, because if you don't get through to that person, they'll talk to their friend or someone else, and then I'll go and see um, Adrian. He's that, well, I don't like the term vegan doctor at work, because of course, 
it's not for me to put my ethical thoughts on people. Um, because I call myself a plant-based doctor because of course that's an evidence-based science. You know, they say, go and see Adrian, you know, the, the vegan doctor or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it causes a ripple effect. Um, and I, I like that. Um, because even though our consultations are one-on-one, -on -one, um, we're making, you know, we do make a difference. And I've got a couple of staff and another doctor at our practice who are plant-based. Um, we, even to this day where I tell people, oh, you can get your food from such and such a shop or you can or see so-and-so for different things. And it's nice. It's almost starting to, little community, it, mm. you know, it, it's starting to get to like that in our community. Mm. Have you been able to influence any of your medical colleagues or medical students? The medical students, I think we've inf influenced probably like our sons, um, we just feed them. Mm -hmm. We feed them fantastic nutritious foods. I think also medical students now are more aware of the environmental impact of their food choices. And a lot of them come in via that portal. And then when we coach them, feed them, and talk to them about um, the plant-based nutrition, um, that helps them along their path as well. So I noticed they start counseling patients more and more uh, rather than just say, oh, see a dietitian. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Nice. How much, what percentage of illness that you see in your patients is, is chronic, like attributed to lifestyle, would you say? Um, oh, probably 25% isn't. Wow. So most of it is. A lot, most, seriously, most of it. Like I said, I've, since I've stopped um, delivering babies, um, my practice, I'm seeing older people and um, I love it before they get their symptomatic illness because I can turn the ship, help them turn the ship around. But as you know, the Titanic sometimes, it wasn't a very, it was a very difficult ship to turn around. Mm. Yeah. A, a, most of my patients. Mm. I hear you have and your blood work also improved when you went plant-based. I've actually used that in a presentation I gave. I call it uh, Mr. A. And this is his cholesterol, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it went from about, oh, in your figures, about 250 down to about 160, my total cholesterol. And that was great. Um, so we have a competition whenever we do our bloods who can get the lowest cholesterol. <laughs> Because Ooh, I... we're not competitive at all. <laughs> blood pressure. And the lowest blood pressure. Yeah. And our son, Andrew, who's an ED nurse, um, we sent him a, a screenshot of the blood pressure machine and it was about 105 on 70. And we were about the same. And he said, if you came into our ED, we'd put you on a drip and give you, flu give you fluids. Especially because of our age. Because of our age, yeah. God, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah. You teach medical students, don't you? I do. I do. Um, I teach them, oh, you know, not specifically on nutrition, um, but uh, in general, I do teach medical students. And I find that really rewarding. And also registrars and, and junior doctors. Um, but I, I find it good that as a sort of one of the older members of the tribe, some would say as one of the dinosaurs, um, we do have an influence on the, our juniors. And I think that's a really great responsibility, no matter what profession you're in, to make sure you, you do mentor the next generation with evidence. It has to be with evidence and it can't just be anecdotal, but I love it. And I think I am making a difference. Um, part, part of their education yes. is yes. coming for dinner and uh, <laughs> feeding them great food and just um, mentioning a few facts and yeah. some evidence and I, yeah. yeah I call that the circle of life because <laughs> when when I was a student um my bosses would buy me coffee sometimes well wouldn't feed me often but mm. feed me but and I see that now that's my role to mentor the juniors um but I, I think we are making a difference um yeah 
That's great. Jenny, did you always like to cook? And I'm curious, when you first became plant-based 10 or 11 years ago, did you have resources for whole food plant-based cooking? I've always enjoyed just food and, and cooking. I wouldn't call myself a, an amazing cook or anything, but there are there's so much online now and there are so many great books. So I, I think initially it was a matter of plantifying what we'd normally eat just to ease in. But now, oh, there are so many things to explore and so many amazing meals to make. Um, there's such a lot of information. And even 10 years ago, I think there was information. Perhaps I had to look a little harder, but now it's just everywhere. I, I, I spend my days, apart from keeping active and fit and doing classes, in the garden, bringing produce in and turning it into something in the kitchen. It's an absolute joy. Yeah. Tell us about your garden. It's quite extensive. When we built our home five years ago, our landscaper's brief was the garden is to be edible. So pretty much everything in the garden is edible. Um, every season we have an abundance of, um, of produce. We have fruit trees, vegetable garden, mm. um, some even some native foods, berries, greens. There's something to pick every day. We're just finishing off all the summer fruits and veggies at the mm. moment. Um, and we've just headed into autumn or your fall. I always forget that we're in totally <laughs> different, you know, we're in totally different seasons right it's now. It, That's yes, right. So you're going into, you've just started spring, we're into fall. And on recipes, one thing I've noticed because I follow a lot of um, US um, people and recipes and sites, I have to go, oh, hang on. This is, of course, you know, it's, it's the wrong season. I'll have to put that recipe aside and go looking for something that's appropriate for our season. So the in-between, you know, the spring and fall are easy because those foods are um, very similar. But in the depths of winter here, I receive beautiful, you know, salad recipes online from all the people I follow. Uh, save those, tuck those yeah. away for next season. And one of the things we try and do is when people visit us, we send them away with vegetables or greens or fruit. And... Well, it, you know, apart from just, it's just a nice thing to do. It's advocacy. That's right. We decided if it would be something from the garden or a meal. Some, even if people call in for a cup of cup of tea or coffee, there's a plant-based treat I might have in the fridge or freezer. freezer. So our form of advocacy is to yeah. um, send people away with healthy plant food. That's delicious. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Do you ever guys ever think about writing a book? in our spare time yes no <laughs> there are so many great books out there that yeah. um i love recommending things to people yeah. and as we say um we, i'm looking at a library full of plant-based nutrition books that um we run as a little library and mm. love to i'd rather they were out being read by people than sitting on a shelf yeah. at, at our house yeah that's great. I heard you were involved in a community plant-based like meetup, at least before the pandemic. Yes, before the pandemic, that was once a month, um, just a, a group, a friend and I would run a little monthly get together. We would demonstrate several um, dishes and let everyone taste, send them away with the recipes. Heaps of fun. So yeah. it's in recess at the moment, but hopefully I want to get involved again in doing something out in the community. Yeah. It was growing. It, it was. Yeah. Um, I think at its peak, we were having 20 guests. Yeah. So it would be a, a battle sometimes to make enough food to make sure everyone yeah. got a taste of everything. Once again, it was that ripple effect. Yeah. It just grew. In, uh, we have a smallish community, I guess, and it's very, people are very connected here. So the beauty of educating, you know, one person, it means their family and then their friends mm. and everyone knows everyone in our community. Yeah. So the word spreads and it's been great. Mm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Are most of your patients, Dr. Christie, uh, people that aren't vegan or whole food plant-based? 
The vast majority are, but I'm also building up a practice of people who want a plant-friendly doctor who's not going to tell them to eat meat for iron. Um, and I, you could say that more and more of my patients are getting um, plant-based, um, whether they're fully plant-based or just plant mostly. It's, it's as long as it's in that direction. And like I've said before, when people actually feel better and spend less money on their medications, um, they, they get it. They understand where you're coming from. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's, you come home after a day like that and um, having um, someone else, someone to debrief with, I said, oh, I saw so-and-so, not so-and-so, I saw someone today with, um, we got their cholesterol or their A1C down from 10% to 7% or whatever. And I love those numbers because if you look at the, the data, metformin, um, which is the most commonly used diabetes drug, um, can get your A1C down between 1% and 2% on average. And I've had people's A1C drop from 10 or 11%, which is pretty sugar-coated, down to about 7%. Um, sure, they might still be diabetic at that stage, but they think, I can do this. And then we keep going and keep going till we get them either in remission or reversal, depending on what you believe in. <laughs> hmm. yeah. Well, you get them, it sounds like you're getting them better. We are, we are. And that of course, then less complications. So, and everyone wins. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys, are, are, does exercise or movement play a big role in your daily life and in that of your patients? Because I find that it's it's sometimes easier to get people to eat healthfully than to embrace any kind of exercise. Uh, yeah, so well, it does yeah, play it a does part, play a part in, our, in our life. Yeah. And one thing I I love is that we walk everywhere around our district, and um, people comment, "Oh, you you two are always out walking," and I think that's great for Adrian's patients. They see him. They see him. You have to out walking. You have to be seen to be doing the right thing. And not just do it in private or mm. just or do the wrong thing in public. I think you can't. Mm. That's one of the disadvantages of being a rural GP, that you're a big fish in a small pond. But when that behavior aligns with your own values, it's not that hard. Yeah. No, we we try and walk as much as possible. I stopped going to the gym oh probably oh haven't been for about four months. We've got this Omicron. Um, flare up at the moment so I just do my own work at home we've got lots of steps here at home and we built our house specifically like that despite um, being in our late 50s at the time um, because that's how we stay healthy by walking up steps hmm. so it means walking up steps in our garden and um, walking the other thing we try and do and you'll notice there's a labyrinth in the background of our screen um, I, I think of Dean Ornish when he talks about, you know, the pillars of health, nutrition, movement, love and connection, stress management, and then of course, sleep. Um, that's something we, we really try and do. And by doing that, I think that's what keeps us happy and healthy and able to help more people as well. Hmm. You mentioned yeah. Dr. Dean Ornish, who I've had the privilege of interviewing a couple of times. Yeah. I'm curious, who are your plant-based heroes? Well, he would definitely He's be one, one. Of, apart from, of course, um, Colin Campbell and Caldwell Esselstyn and Chef AJ. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, good company. There's so yeah. many wonderful people. Um, Neil Barnard, of course, and Dr. Michael Clapper. And I think we feel it, even though we've only met a couple we feel as though we know everyone it's such a community yeah. um yeah. there's just so many terrific people dr john mcdougall um mm. the whole gang yeah i just yeah great I'm, I'm finding the next generation you could say really interesting and i particularly with the gut um with will bulsevich and his um, fiber fuel book that's very very good um and I talk to patients a lot about the gut and Alan Desmond, who's a British doctor, 
Um, they're very, very good and under helping people understand not only it's what goes into your stomach, it's then how you absorb it, digest it, mm. and what comes out the other end. Mm. I think, yeah, that's really important. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Are there, do you know of other Australian plant-based doctors? I know not a lot have come out of the cupboard the closet i should say the cupboard. <laughs> no, cupboard. no. Um, I know, from doctors the, the, for nutrition. The, the, the ones in doctors for nutrition absolutely yeah tell us They're about tell us, yeah, that, uh, 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 this whole week is sponsored by doctors for nutrition so tell us a little bit about the organization and what your role is in it well as i'm not sure if um, your, your um, viewers are aware but doctors for nutrition is a plant-based charity started about oh, be five six years ago now by um, Dr. Helene and, um, and a another a lady um, called Lucy. It's basically, the mission is to inspire um, healthcare sector, such as doctors, nurses, dietitians, any healthcare worker, um, inspire policy makers. So going up, up the chain or across the chain or down the chain to, to parliament and society at large to adopt the whole food plant-based nutrition as a tool um, for disease prevention and care. Um, it's, I think it's a great organization. Um, they work through collaboration, obviously, um, compassion, accountability, and of course, impact through evidence. That's, that's what it's all about is the evidence based. Um, and I actually, I do know for a fact that doing because of the evidence based component, um, they have I believe turned down some sponsorship from certain groups, which I think that's fair. It's everything is um, accountable and evidence based. And my role is um, the South Australian, wait for this, ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, each state of Australia, we have a, a, a doctor and a lead dietitian. And, um, and also New Zealand. And New Zealand, of course. Of course, they're the seventh and eighth states of Australia. No, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. No, and New Zealand. Um, there I, like are that, I like that word ambassador yeah I know I yeah someone must have been high on plants at the time no so funny. good term so yeah that's that's my role and I help some a bit of it like it's like an advisory role um but then um you get invited to give presentations and and so on well, that sounds fun. Tell us, like, yeah. what what, do you, what kind of foods do you guys eat? Is it is it different in Australia? Like, I know I, I one of the doctors was talking about something I've never had. Marmite, I think it was. Veg Vegemite. 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 Sorry, I, excuse, but I, so what do you guys eat? Like, what do you eat for a day, for example? Well, the, the breakfast would be a big bowl of rolled oats. Um, Mousse. or a muesli type of um, arrangement, um, lots of fruit, some ground flaxseed, nuts and seeds, um, um, and, and what, a plant milk. And what do you have every morning? Your um, cacao-covered kale nola. I, I make a granola out of kale. I oh, found you're a kidding. Of... A granola out of kale? That's fascinating. With lots of cacao. Kale, uh, kale and um, buckwheat in um, like a cacao sauce made with almond butter. Wow, that sound, I, that's a way to get people to eat kale. I yeah. think so, I've even made, um, have you heard of chocolate crackles? Do you have, are they? Oh, a, it may, is it like uh, like Cocoa Puffs maybe? Like that, it's, 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 it's a plant-based healthy version of Cocoa Puffs. Or cocoa, that's maybe Cocoa Krispies, like Rice Krispies, but cocoa flavored, maybe that. I mean, it's been a long it, time since I ate something like that, but I've heard I, of it. I grew up on Cocoa Puffs. Um, so it's my, my healthy version of that. So that's, um, that's, that's cool. a delicious yeah. treat. So processed have, food has uh, overtaken Australia just as much as here. Oh, I think oh, yeah. so, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of people eat a processed cereal breakfast. Um, yeah, for yeah. sure. Is so we McDonald's, have, do you have McDonald's in Australia? Is fast food really? Absolutely. We have yeah. a range of, yes, different names. McDonald's is everywhere. We have different names of fast food 
um, outlets. Um, do they make the food different though? Like for example, like because it's Australia, do they change the menu? They have, they oh, use no, Angus no. beef as, cause that's probably the, the most, the most commonly seen um, cow, cattle variety in Australia. So they call it an Angus burger. Um, do I, I'm not yeah. even familiar. They, I just see the rubbish on the streets. Yeah because recently we have a McDonald's out, our, outlet our, our, in yeah, our area. Yeah. But you're and rural, you shouldn't have to have one. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but we do. It's one of several. Because um, we, we live in outlets. a major tourism spot up here. It's, as you know, the Barossa Valley is one of the world's great wine, wine, reg, wine and food regions. So we have a lot of visitors who need this food, apparently. Mm. They've got a vegan burger, which apparently sells really, really well. So. That's that's a good start. Yeah, but I bet it's full of oil and salt. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's still the caloric content and fat contents. Not, I don't think it's too different. But don't quote me on it. Yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. So it's so funny. A, 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 a grain in a fruit that seems to be a common answer for breakfast. What what would lunch be? Often a soup. Even in the middle of our summer, we would still have a, a big veggie and legume based soup. See, that's one of the Salads. things that. We do. Jenny Batch cooks, mm. and she cooks a big bowl, a big, you know, bowl of soup. And I just have soup every day at lunchtime. Soup's one of um, the best things you can eat. Great. So good. And on it? day one, I have a, a soup. On day two, maybe some potatoes get put in it. On day three, potatoes and a few greens. So variations on a theme. And that's one of the novelty things in our work tea room, <laughs> when we were able to have more than four people in there without becoming classified as close contacts if someone got COVID. So, yeah. So I try and make Adrian's lunch look um, attractive and interesting. So when he takes the lid off, his yeah. colleagues go, and what do you have today? Trying to just inspire other people. Mm. So well, And it know, does, it does, it does. Do you, do you have a staff, Dr. Christie, like uh, in your office? Are there other practitioners, nurses or PAs or things like that? We've got 12, doc 12 doctors at our practice, about eight, 10 nurses and about 10 to 12 office staff. So in total, it's about 40 of us at the practice over two sites. Wow. Can you just bring lunch for all of them? Oh, uh, well. I'd love most, to do that. Most of them would eat it. Most of them would 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 they would love it see once again we were hit by the pandemic just as we were about to look at having stuff like that mm. yeah but there is scope to do scope. something like that and um yeah that would be fun yeah and it is having a ripple effect as i said before what we do mm. do you use the instant pot jenny to make these soups um I do. We have a different brand, but it is basically an instant pot. Um, and I use that frequently. It's it's just great. It's I, because I do lots of batch cooking. Batch cooking. Yeah, those sorts of pieces of equipment are, are just brilliant. Soups and stews and um, um, bean chilies, all, all that sort of thing. They feature regularly um, during the week. And because it's it's still warmish here. Lots of hearty salads filled with different legumes, that sort of thing. Potatoes um, are a big staple yeah. in our house, mm. especially because we grew some potatoes this year and harvested 30, 35, kilos. 35 kilos of potatoes. Um, so lots of things have potatoes in at the moment. Um, but other starch staples too, like brown rice and quinoa sweet potatoes, that's sort of the basis. Everything contains a legume. Everything has greens in it yeah. because we have greens growing in the garden, yeah. lots of herbs and spices. Do yeah. you ever use something called an air fryer? Have you heard of that? Yes, I yes. have an air fryer. Absolutely. I use that frequently. You can just make the best ever um, wedges. I cook my potatoes in the slow cooker, just let them cook themselves, cool them. And most often I have cold potatoes ready in the fridge to 
chop up and pop into the air fryer in almost instant beautiful potato wedges the other thing jenny started doing recently is um, cut figs up in quarters or halves or plums and put them in the air dryer air dryer air, air fryer, fryer um, and um, we have them for dessert yeah yeah wow yeah. Do you yes. get a wide variety of potatoes and sweet potatoes in Australia? Have you heard of like the Hannah Yam or the Murasaki or the Japanese? No. 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 And often I'll read recipes um, and think, oh, I don't know what that potato is, but I'll just substitute whatever, whatever we have. Yeah. I haven't even I haven't heard of any of those no. particular varieties. Oh, they're so if you well, they're they're delicious. So the, the ones you get are mostly orange then? The sweet potatoes sweet potato, are. Yeah. I always hunt for the, the purple fleshed sweet potatoes, but I can't find those very commonly in our area. Oh, no. Anything with, anything with lots of colour. Um, the more colour, the better. Um, love to, you know, cook and eat things like that. Sure, I can imagine. And so we, we've got uh, the, the soup for lunch. So dinner, what is dinner? Dinner, oh, so many so many varieties of things. I'm just trying to think. Last night I made that beautiful tuna, not tuna salad with chickpeas um, that I found on Forks Over Knives. And a big, a big baked potato with, um, with that and greens on the side, homegrown tomatoes, homegrown cucumbers. Mm. And there are so many lovely dressings and sauces um, in the whole food plant-based range just to enhance even a simple meal of steamed veggies and some potatoes on the side. That sounds nice good to me. Yeah, there's always an abundance um, of beautiful food and it's, it can be so quick and easy to prepare if you've got some staples already prepared in the fridge. Mm. Often have a big, um, like a bean chili prepared and do that in bulk so that's in the fridge and one night it goes on the sweet potato that's been roasted another night on brown rice maybe even another night with some um legume pasta just mm. variations on a theme i think batch cooking is probably the most important yeah. thing for compliance mm. i agree even our um even our sons one um the youngest will and because he works shift work He'll spend a couple of evenings in the week or days around his shifts doing a big batch of multiple things. So he's got food to take to work, food when he comes home. Yeah. So if, you know, a, a young man in his 20s who works shift work can do it, I think anyone yeah. can really once they have the, the knowledge and the a few skills. And he saves so much money because you don't get a takeaway or a take in as a result. You've yeah. got your food already there because that's you've just got to take away as many barriers as you can to eating healthily. Mm. And I know that's something which I try to teach my patients. I use Jenny's experience. Um, I think I channel my inner Jenny when I'm talking to patients. Think about what you had for yeah. lunch. And How dinner. do we plantify what, you're, what you love to eat? Because it's just as you've gathered the food we eat at home, the flavor is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can teach people or plant a few seeds, no pun intended, mm -hmm. for people to eat more healthily and have it more flavoursome, then I think everyone's a winner. Mm. I think some people have this idea that we exist on a block of tofu and lettuce and tomato. Oh. Um, and when people have the opportunity to eat, to eat beautiful whole food plant-based meals, they're blown away. And um, it really does help them reframe what healthy eating is. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Mm. What, what practical advice do you give your patients, Dr. Christie? Because I imagine as a rural doctor, I mean, they could be coming in for something that has nothing to do with nutrition. I don't know, you know, broke a sprained ankle or, or something. Do you use every opportunity to tell them to eat healthier? I, I really believe strongly in two minute intervention. And that's actually quite evidence-based. Um, you use an opportunity like, like that, say it's 
So is your mum cooking your meal for you or what are you doing and, and so on. So that's just a simple thing. Or if, if someone's clearly not looking as healthy as they should, or even like, for instance, people who are smokers or people who drink more, just look at where they are. I love that um, stages of change model, which a lot of your um, viewers may be, some may be aware of. I work out if that person's contemplating change, if they're not interested, or if they're actually in the process. Um, and I feed them information depending on where they're at. Um, or have you tried such and such? Or maybe one day come back and we'll have a chat. Or what about batch cooking? You know, you can have, you can cook 10 all beet patties. Um, because of course the McDonald's commercial here was all beef patties. So that resonates with a lot of young people. Um, and I talk about skill power um, as much as willpower and not having things in your pantry. Or I know I keep talking about batch cooking, but it makes such a difference. I don't know how people, I don't know how anybody eats food, whether it's plant-based or not without batch cooking, yeah. unless they're eating every meal at a restaurant, because oh, I, I, I just, it's I think hard. it's one of the biggest game yeah. changers, because yeah. if, if you have healthy food ready, when you're hungry, you're going to eat it. Yeah, that's right. And we talk about, you know, planning. And I know Jenny um, will have sometimes a meal plan for a week. Um, and I think that makes a difference because you don't want to come home from work. You know, if your patients say, oh, but I'm working so hard, I'm working shift work or whatever. They come home from work and they haven't got anything organized. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Call a menu log or Uber Eats, which fortunately you can't get from here because <laughs> we we're in the that. country. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So, so we're deprived. No, not Thank really. Goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> so yeah, th that, that's how I approach that's how I approach it. But every consultation, there is an opportunity for a two minute intervention. The only problem with that is I see sometimes up to 30 patients a day. And so that means you're running an hour late just from your interventions. Um, but wow. people appreciate patients that. A day, that's a, isn't that a lot? 30 patients, eight hour, that's like- That's 15 hours. in the morning and 15 in the afternoon. Wow. That's about 10, 10 11 hour day. That's amazing. Have yeah, you but, mentioned some of the, the uh, people in the plant-based world you admired? Have you had an opportunity to meet any of them? Because I know many of them have spoken in Australia. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I've actually got a photo of Jenny standing next to Chef AJ on the Holistic Holiday at Sea <laughs> 2019. <gasps> I think that was the last year many of us went because I of know. the that pandemic. Was a, I know, yeah. environment. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. So yeah. that was a wonderful opportunity to see in person some of the people we've been following for years. Yeah. And we heard who's Michael, come to Australia. Michael Clapper Dr. came to Clapper Australia. Came. To Australia. Um, I know Dr. Doug Lyle spoke in somewhere, I think it starts in Canberra, but we couldn't Unfortunately, see him. Unfortunately, we, we missed couldn't, that. We missed that one. That would have been yeah. great. And we've got a hardbound copy of the China study autographed by Colin Campbell. Yes, we've met Dr. Campbell yeah. on yeah. the on the um, vegan cruise. Yeah. Um, so still a few people to tick off. Yeah. Dr. Barnard came and spoke at the inaugural Doctors for well, Nutrition conference, conference in, um, in, in Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. So that was great. And Scott Stoll. And also Kim Williams, cardiologist, came and spoke here um, one month before the lockdown in 2020. Hmm. Did you get, uh, I don't know if it's different in Australia, what they call board certification in the United States, but did you uh, go back to get one in lifestyle medicine? I, I chose to go for a fellowship, which is slightly different to board certification. Um, so I, I have a fellowship in lifestyle medicine, um, mostly in plant-based nutrition, because that's where I've done most of my training, but you also do... Um, competencies in other areas mm. yes i have and a lot of my practice is lifestyle medicine um, as a result of having that extra knowledge mm. yeah well almost everything i think except for accidents and maybe genetic disorders is lifestyle medicine when you think about yeah. it yeah i know i know that's right so true yeah. and it's, it's still seen in some circles as a bit of a wishy-washy um area but um, I think more and more people actually understanding it's not just 
Um, go and see a dietitian, go and see a podiatrist, go and do this and just move more. It's a lot more than that. Um, yeah. When you give people evidence, that's, I think, the clincher. Hmm. Yeah, and you also did the uh, the e Cornell course, the plant based nutrition course, Dr. Yeah. Campbell's course. Yeah, that, that was. That must have been. A, yeah, that must have been a piece of kale for you. Yeah, that was that was brilliant. Yeah, and that yeah, that was well. I hate using this term game changer ever since the movie, but that was a real game changer as well. Yeah. Um, well, since um, I've still, since done the Winchester University course that's a similar course run by Shireen Kassam I have who, heard of uh, that I've had her on the show yeah very good course but that, that's the other one that's very good um she's done a few short courses not necessarily whole food plant-based but uh, I think they're called mooches and one on food and mood um Professor Felice Jacker from I think it's Deakin University she's a world in authority Melbourne. in Melbourne um she's developed a, um, a, a Mediterranean type diet, which albeit has some fish and a little bit of olive oil, but for people with mental health problems, a lot of them, that was a bit, that's a big improvement on what they were having. So, and once again, that comes back to the gut, the gut mm. and serotonin, you know, happy hormone and so on. Um, I, I just, yeah, that, that's something I advocate specifically for people with who are depressed. Um, and who have anxiety, just work in that direction. Mm. Do you tell your patients to learn to cook or send them to Jenny for cooking lessons? I screen them first before <laughs> sending them to Jenny. And as during a consultation, um, I say to the patient, hang on, I'll just phone a friend. Because that's a, there's a quiz show here called Millionaire's Hot Seat where you can phone a friend if you don't know an answer. And <laughs> um, so I said, I'll phone a friend. So I send Jenny a text and we get a text back saying, oh yes, that's lentils and such and such or, or three tablespoons water to one tablespoon flax, you know, little bits of advice like that or she'll send the reference through. Um, so that's, that's sort of entry level Jenny involvement through to some people who will visit our kitchen and often with a friend and they'll spend half a day in Jenny's laboratory <laughs> yeah. and learning and absorbing. When we built the home we live in about five years ago and one of the, the ideas was to have a, a large kitchen with a very big bench that people could sit up against and we could do things like that. So it's, it's great. And I can have someone sitting at the bench and we can talk about menu planning and batch cooking and I can show them ideas lend them recipe books, um, give them websites to look at. I can open my fridge and pantry and show them substitutes for things they mm. might currently be eating and even put together a week's a menu with ideas and recipes so they can go away and just start on the journey. And then if they wish, they can phone, phone me for some ideas during the week or just... I find just getting people started mm. and getting them inspired is often all it takes. And if they're highly motivated to improve their health or to lose weight or whatever their reason is, um, it doesn't take a lot to get people inspired. And then they just need some support mm. along the way. Yeah. Because there's so many things that conspire against us, I think, um, yeah. in the outside world when yeah. you, you want to make improvements in the way you eat where do they get the support the ongoing support i think um people who are able to with so much help online that that's really helpful um sometimes the personal touch does make a difference just having someone to talk to and connecting them with other people they might um, know in our community and as adrian said there is quite a little network, a network yeah. there's, there's a lot more people now that eat whole food plant based i can put other people in touch with mm -hmm. we had a lovely once again pre-pandemic a lovely group we started that's sort of in recess for the moment but there are other people out there and it's mm -hmm. surprising yeah. um every now and then I, i'll talk to somebody and think oh goodness they're on the same pathway as us yeah. 
and there's someone else. And they're getting more and more people like that. There are. Yeah, like, um, and there's web resources, um, obviously like forks over knives and so on. Doctors for Nutrition. Doctors for Nutrition. Done um, a lot in that respect. Plump, Plump Howard Adelaide, which is one of the um, pods. Um, Plump U Nation. Plump U Nation pods. And we just started Plant Powered Barossa when the pandemic hit. So that's something to, that's something to we'll, we'll yeah. get that up and going. Yeah. And they're good because they're in, um, Plant Powered Adelaide is interactive. So that's really good. Hmm. Uh, I'm just yeah. curious. I'm trying to read your t shirt. Does it say anything like a plant based slogan or something? Can you read that? Eat more veggies. I love it. I love it. This is the one I often wear when I do a little recipe demo or class. Um, I'm looking forward to buying one of Rebecca Stoner's Just Eat Plants t-shirts when she has those up and going. Yeah. She's, um, she's doing wonderful things. In she's been sport. on my show twice. She makes yes, yes, we've seen her. We've she watched. makes tiramisu. She yeah. does. She, her recipes are just amazing. Yeah. Um, and have you... Um, recently um, on her website she announced that her most recent because of course Rebecca's got multiple sclerosis her most recent MRI showed absolutely no change again no which new is, lesions no new lesions which is fabulous mm -hmm. and she's looking know. terrific yeah she yeah I hear that no one leaves your home without a goodie bag <laughs> that's that's the plan even yep. and it doesn't matter whether it's family or friends or even Tradesmen. The, the tradespeople oh, yeah. that come, whether it's our electrician or um, someone coming to fix something, I, I, I send them away with something from the garden or something from the kitchen. That's our goal. Yeah. And um, we have, when there are always medical students at the practice and we invite them for, for a meal and try and send them home with something from the garden as well. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for the work you do. All right. And well, thank you thank as well, you. of course, I mean, for your work. Yes. <laughs> I was remembering back um, when we were running our recipe group, our demonstration um, classes, one of the most popular recipes we presented was your beautiful outrageous brownie, the healthy oh, brownie. Thank you. You know, I have oh, a new book coming really? out very soon. It's actually my first book, but it's been republished with photos and the lasagna is, is, is the most, like one of the best if you ever have a chance to make it. Oh, that looks beautiful. I love the cover. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a, we have beautiful photography by Hannah Kaminsky and these are the, these are the sweet potato nachos, which are so easy because you, you just yeah. cut up yeah, the sweet potatoes or the chips and you put on the beans and the salsa and the guacamole, yes. if you like, which I make out of peas and it's, you know, cilantro, jalapenos. It's really good. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I'll have you to add that one to the, um, the library. To the library for sure. <laughs> I, hope you can, I hope you can get it in Australia. Can can oh. regular people get involved with DFN? Yes, they can. Um, th there's a the website has got quite a lot of information. Um, everything from recipes through to blogs, um, through to upcoming events of which there haven't been a lot. Um, but no, just go to the website. It's doctorsfornutrition.org. Um, and that's, yeah, it, it's all on there. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a really good website with a lot of information on it. Yeah. We'll make sure we link to it. And, and irregular people can get involved too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's for yeah. everybody. For everyone. For yeah. everyone. Well, it was such a pleasure getting to know you a little bit more. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you for your continued work to make Australia healthier. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to talk to you. Likewise. Same here. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow as we continue with Plant Based Experts Down Under Week with Dr. Renee Thomas. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.